Hi everyone and welcome to this week's War's End History Story. This week I am covering the 50 year anniversary of War's End becoming a borough. This will be very similar to the story about War's End when it first became a borough in 1901 in that it will mostly cover the events that were happening at the time. I hope you will enjoy it and find it interesting. The Mayor of War's End in 1951 was Alderman James McFadden. The difference in the council in 1951 is that there were now 27 councillors and in 1901 there had only been 19, which shows that the town had grown a lot more since the borough was created in 1901. A couple of little details from the Jubilee Handbook. A mention was made of the cost of the stocks in St Peter's Churchyard when they were brand new. Although there is no date when they were bought, they had cost at the time £2.09. shillings. They are still to be seen in the churchyard today, as you will know if you have watched my video about the history of St Peter's. The handbook also mentions that prior to the outbreak of World War II, the council had plans to build a bigger library to replace the one that had opened on Park Road in 1933. However, as yet this had not happened. The library had proved to be very popular and demand for books was immense, much greater than they had ever imagined that it would be, and it was very clear that a larger library would be needed. The new library on Ferndale Avenue would not be built until 1965. The handbook also discusses some of the well-known people of Wall's End, such as Sir J.B. Hunter, John Buddle and W.T. Stead, some of whom I have already covered in stories and others, including W.T. Stead, I will hopefully cover in future stories. In 1901, the census had 20,647 people living in the borough of Wall's End, and by 1911, this figure had risen to 41,343. The handbook does not give an estimate of how many were living in War's End in 1951. I do have a copy of the War's End 1951 Jubilee Handbook, so a lot of the information is from that. Other information is from other old newspaper reports. The handbook in 1951 had been for sale for two and six at various locations throughout the town and I do wonder how many of them survived today so do let me know if you have a copy of it. It was said at the time that the cost to produce it had been around £1,055 and interest in buying them had been quite low with sales of only around £456 by October of 1951. What they didn't actually say was how many had actually been produced. Alderman McArdle was the chairman of the Jubilee Committee and he had many things to say about the 50 years that had passed since 1901. He said that Wall's End had grown very much and was still growing today despite the setbacks of two world wars and the Great Depression. He talked of the great improvements such as the well, which had been the one time only water supply of Willington Quay and was often polluted, which had been replaced with water supplies to the homes in the area. He said it had been 50 years of hard work, but the town now could be proud of what they had achieved. The celebrations for the War's End Jubilee took place in June of 1951. It was set to be almost a full month of events and activities starting on the 9th and the final events taking place on Sunday the 24th. Obviously it would be a bit much to read the list so I've just picked out a few of the more interesting events and grouped the others together. There would be balls and tennis tournaments taking place throughout the month and also several dances at the Memorial Hall including old time dancing and something called 50-50 dancing and I have absolutely no idea what that one is. And there would also be a swimming gala at Wall's End Baths. There would be an open air Thanksgiving service at Holy Cross Ruins on June the 10th at 3pm. However, if it was raining, this would be at St Luke's Church instead. 
And yes, I did try to check the weather, but I couldn't find out what it was in 1951. St. Peter's Church would be organising an, an, an exhibition in the parochial hall on Charlotte Street, where parish registers dating back 300 years would be on display for one week. There was to be a mass choir in the Burn Closes on June the 11th at 7pm, with 4,000 local school children taking part. I wasn't able to find any details of this as I was unable to find any news articles, but I do wonder if anyone remembers this choir or if this event was actually cancelled due to bad weather. There would also be sheepdog trials on the football ground at North Road on June the 23rd. It was said that by car and van, 75 sheep and 25 sheepdogs would be transported to Wall's End for the first ever sheepdog trials to be held there. It was thought that this would be the first time that many of the people of Wall's End would have ever seen sheepdogs at work and they felt that the event would be very popular. The event had been organised by Mr Boren of Hall Farm. Farmers from as far away as Carlisle and Richmond had entered their dogs for the trials with a silver cup and £7 prize money on offer for the winner. From the 14th to the 16th of June, there would be a searchlight tattoo at Swan Hunter's Recreation Ground. This was one of the main events of the celebrations and special buses would be available to transport people to and from the ground. The tattoo would be starting at 10pm and finishing at 11.30pm. And of course, there was also a trades exhibition on the Village Green. Many of the town's industrial businesses would have a stand at the exhibition, such as Monitor, Swan Hunters, Parsons, Northeast Marine and Victor Products. Also on display would be the actual charter of the incorporation of Wall's End signed by King Edward VII. It was said to be the smallest but the most important item on display. The last event was on June the 24th, when there would be motorcycle trials and sports in the Burn Closes. It was said that over 5,000 people braved the rain in the morning to watch the annual event, which in 1951 had been included in the Jubilee celebrations. However, the motorcycle sports, which had been due to take place in the afternoon, had to be cancelled because of the bad weather. The trial winners were, in first place, A. Markham, in second place, P. A. Armstrong, and in third place, K. Holloway. All of the riders came from Newcastle. Well, all of those one to three riders came from Newcastle. There was also a Miss Wall's End competition, and the winner was a Miss Brenda Wise, a 24-year-old shorthand typist who lived on the high street, and her two attendants were Miss Joan Smith, who was 19 and lived in Park Road, and Miss Doreen Carter, who was 20 and lived in Vine Street. An open-top car would be carrying Miss Wall, Wall's End, Miss Wall, Miss Wall's End, and her two attendants to the events taking place during the Jubilee, and it was hoped that their bosses would still pay their wages while they were busy with their temporary duties. The Wall's End illuminations consisted of two miles of cable and over 10,000 colour bulbs which were to cover the high street area and it must have looked quite impressive when it was all lit up. There certainly seemed to be no expense spared with the Jubilee celebrations and every effort had been made to make sure that there was something for everyone in the town to enjoy from dancing to sheepdog trials. And I can imagine in a time when TVs would have been quite new and not many people would have had one, that town entertainment and events would be something that people look forward to attending. In my mind's eye, I can see the streets of Wall's End crowded with people on their way to watch the motorcycle trials or the sheepdog trials, all looking forward to a fun day out. I hope that you have found this little glimpse into the events of the Jubilee of 1951 interesting 
and I thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you all again very soon.